Alright, picked up this giant chunk of metal off from eBay. Solar King SLK 4000. This is a 4 kilowatt solar grid tie inverter. Supposedly the seller says it has a relay fault, or at least that's what it said on the display screen. So, relays should be pretty easy to fix. I'm hoping I can test it, see if that is indeed the problem, and see if I can fix it. So, what am I going to need to test a grid tie inverter? I am going to need a fairly high voltage source of DC power. I got this little boost module from eBay, it was like six bucks. Puts out up to 400 volts DC, but it's only good for like 40 watts or something. I don't know if that's going to be enough to wake this thing up, but we'll see. Um, I'm going to need a source of AC power, and since I don't want to run a line to the breaker panel just to test this thing, I got this control transformer. This guy will boost 120 to 240 volt. It also has, if you put the windings in series, it'll boost it to 460 volts. We only need the 240 because that's what this inverter is rated for. So, you can see it's a, a little beat up. There's plenty of scratches all over the place. Hopefully the inside is not the same. And here is the top of the unit. Here's all the specs. So it's looking for a normal DC input voltage range from 150 to 450 volts. Max input 20 amps. And of course it's passed all the usual regulations and stuff. Anti-islanding. DC ground fault. Miscellaneous warnings. And the entire back of this thing is a giant heat sink. Okay, so there's your wiring connections. Man, there's a bit of dirt in here. AC output breaker, GFDI switch. Not sure what that stands for. But, um, yeah, it looks like it's in series with the DC input, so that'll, I guess, cut out the DC power if there's a ground fault. Already taking the screws out. Alright. The entire center chunk of the circuit board is just capacitors. We got some beefy uh, common mode chokes, that looks like. It looks like that's on the output side. So we got DC power coming in here. Looks like there's some current sensing modules there. I'm guessing this is the transformer because I don't see any trans big transformers on the board. It's interesting, it's like potted in silicones. Kind of squishy. But we got common mode chokes on the input and the output. Looks like that's probably the power supply that runs all the internals. And the big power elements are just sort of distributed all around. Some up there, some on the sides, some on the left. I think there's some on the bottom too. But of course, we got the control board up top here with the display. It does have USB and serial ca uh, communication capabilities, so that's kind of cool. But the main things I'm noticing are it's nice and clean. It smells like, you know, plastic. It doesn't smell like burnt electronics, which is a good sign. These will be our output relays, which is probably the cause of our fault, if that is indeed the problem. So we'll see about getting this hooked up and see what we can get. Okay, so now I'm going to set the voltage on the boost module. Turn on power. Right now we're at 215 volts. That's pretty good. That's right in the middle of where we want to be. All right, 
right, so we're wired into the inverter. Turn on those. And then we'll enable the voltage. Well, that looks good so far. I'm sure that module didn't appreciate charging up that huge bank of capacitors. And it's not drawing too much power. Oh, that's interesting. Must be doing something. Strange. Alright, next step will be to hook up this transformer and see what we get. Alright, well, after making a stupid wiring mistake and blowing the fuse, I have brought in my big variac and the light bulb for current limiting, because I don't have any more of those big old fuses. So I'm going to jumper that with a alligator clip. Got a 200, 250, or sorry, 50, 200, 250, three-way bulb is our current limiting. Turn the power on. Hmm, that transformer's a little noisy. I have the AC breaker turned off in the inverter. Let's double check our voltage. One ninety three, it's a bit low. up a bit. Two oh five. It's interesting the transformer actually got quieter with more voltage. Two thirteen, that should be enough to make the inverter happy. Because this does say it's rated for two oh eight operation. So, let's see what we get here. Interesting. There is quite a bit of capacitive filtering in here, so that will draw some uh, reactive power. Hmm. The only problem is that's going to make the voltage drop, and that's probably going to make it unhappy. But let's see, we got this on, let's give it some juice, see what happens. Grid fault. Yeah, probably voltage is too low. Well, that's annoying, because I don't think I have any bigger ballast resistors easy to hand. Interesting. All right. Let's see what I can find. A bit heavier duty for the ballast resistor. All right. Decided to go for broke. Just put in the jumper for now. Utility on, DC is on. Hey, look at that.
Well, so far so good. Seems to be drawing current and spikes. I can hear noises coming out of the boost module. I'm sure it's not appreciating the load. It's not doing it now. It's doing something. I can hear a sort of pulsing Well, this is good. If that was just temporary, or maybe there's just some crud in the relay contacts, maybe all the jostling during shipping knocked the crud loose and now it'll work again. You can see there is a fuse down there. But that's good, because I was really not wanting to have to unbolt all of the power semiconductors to take this board out. done with the testing. Hey, there's our relay failure. All right. Alright, well I guess the next step is going to be to hike this board out of here. Alright, well, I got to the point where I was about to start trying to pop all the uh, main power devices loose. And I think I spotted the reason why we're having problems with this. It seems we have an exploded MOSFET there. Let's see, what is that transistor number? It's like Q3, blew a chunk right out of it. So I guess this will be the end of part one. I'll have to see if I can find these. Get a good shot of them. All right, well, good news. It seems Mouser still stocks those transistors. It's actually a, an IGBT, it's not a MOSFET. A little spendy though, $13 a piece. Now that I've removed the board, you can see the freaking skid mark it left when that transistor blew. The yellow gunk is just uh, oils from the silicone grease, I believe, but the, all the brown and the black is the exploded traces. I've already cleaned up the board a little bit, but you can see the the traces are completely gone between the I guess that would be the collector and emitter on the IGBT. So now my main concern is when that exploded, did it explode the MOSFET driver?